Letitia, you want to start us off? Sure. Um, so I always tell parents when it comes to homeschooling, you need to throw every single idea that you have about traditional traditional schooling out the window because none of it applies. Um, one of the things that you will see, even in the way that our courses are set up, um, a lot of our classes for our younger kids are in the in the af late afternoons, early evenings, because we know that parents need to be there in order to assist them. We don't want to schedule a class at nine o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock, and then there's no one there to assist the child. Parents still have to work even with what we have going on. Um, you'll also see that we do a lot of non-traditional things in our classroom. Um, you know, today I had a math camp and um, my students had a competition and, and, you know, they're screaming and yelling and excited because they're trying to make sure that they're the first ones to buzz in for the answer. So we do a lot of non-traditional things in our classrooms, but um, also that homeschooling doesn't look like a seven and a half hour day every day. Um, unfortunately, in, in the regular school system, you do have a lot of fluff and so we try and take that out and remove that so it's going to look a lot different than traditional school so keep that in mind whether you go through this journey with us or you decide to embark upon it individually is going to be a whole different situation um, the courses that we've decided to offer this school year are our core courses mathematics science reading in ela writing and we did separate those out because what we're finding is um, because our kids especially our middle and high school students um, text that's how they write <laughs> so we want to make sure that we are developing good writers with our kids so we did want to add writing um, we'll also do computer science which is our coding um, it'll include uh, some different things with that it's our whole technology piece um, entrepreneurship, uh, as you all know from our bios, we do believe in, in kids having businesses. Um, yes, it will require some things out of the parents, but just introducing them to the idea of entrepreneurship um, and that they don't necessarily have to work for someone in order to achieve success. So we do have an entrepreneurship course. And then every Friday, every student is required to take our scholar success courses. These are the classes that teach you all the things that you need for school, but nobody ever teaches you how to stay organized, how to take tests, how to study, how to take notes. Um, so we'll be time. how to manage time. Yes, that's a big one. Um, so we'll be focusing on those things uh, as well in the scholar success courses. We want to make sure that we are setting your children up to be successful, whether they stay with the academy or they move on to something else. Um, we want them to be successful academically at all times. So those are the courses that we are offering this school year. All right. Awesome. Um, so as it relates to uh, homeschooling, I do want to add um, in terms of materials as well. So with homeschooling, of course, um, well, the school systems are sending home limited materials, but with our homeschooling STEAM, our Overachiever STEAM Homeschool Academy, um, there will be materials that you may need to purchase um, that goes along with your courses. So it may be workbooks, it may be, you know, different types of things. And so you'll get a list um, ahead of time so that you will have, you'll know, and you'll be able to prepare for those things as well. Um, what you'll notice about homeschooling is that like like Letitia said it's very non-traditional so kick that idea out it's all out of the box it's all um you know kind of people kid related and and, and led and um you you do find yourself spending money spending more money like seriously spending more money on educational materials and resources as you become a homeschooling parent uh, and, and I can tell you last year, I literally had to say, okay, I'm not buying anything else. Because you, you start seeing these things, you, oh, this can work for them. Oh, that can work for them. Oh, I can get this for them. So I just want to warn you. <laughs> um, it's kind of like uh, for those of you when you go natural for the first time and they say you become a product junkie. 
uh, with trying all these different things. So you can kind of end up doing the same thing for homeschooling. So just kind of be alert and be, um, you know, be warned that uh, that is real and it can happen and you'll find yourself. So you want to try to stick to, you know, trying to find materials that are uh, free and low cost, definitely in the beginning. Try You want to try not to go and buy all of these curriculums. I'm sitting here looking at a whole sunlight curriculum that I purchased last summer that I haven't used yet. Um, so just want to kind of give you um, some feedback on that. So um, as far as the science portion, I wanted to go into a little more detail because that's the piece that myself and um, some other teachers that we'll be working with um, will be um, going over and doing. So the way that we have our science set up is um, for the high school level, it will be broken down based on the actual subject. So we will be offering chemistry, we will be offering biology, we'll be offering physics. Um, because we know and understand that those are some things that are needed for a college level in terms of those classes and courses. And uh, yes, students will have um, grades um, and great reports as it relates to all of that so that you can keep them on track as well. Um, for the elementary and middle school levels, we'll have them grouped um, by elementary and then by middle grades. And the way that I do science as it relates to STEAM is it's topic and project based. Uh, we will look at those uh, standards as it relates to the classroom and just kind of make sure we're tying in all those things, but we go over and beyond that. And I can give you an example of what we did um, this school year. So we started chemistry. Um, and this is at our elementary level. So they learned about the periodic table, atoms and molecules. And instead of having a test at the end of that unit, what they had to do was create like a Pokemon trading card. And um, it was a superhero and they had to choose an element off the periodic table and they had to give it superpowers and they had to give it a nemesis and all those things um, based on the boiling point, the melting point, you know, all those things. So that's how they're learning. And I'll be honest with you, I used, because I'm a former high school science teacher, I actually used my high school materials with my elementary kids and they were able to connect and understand the information. So we pull from lots of different places. Um, if one of your questions is about curriculum, um, we pull from lots of different places to pull our curriculums together. And, um, but we want it to be more hands-on versus, again, we're not replicating the school setting or the school system at all all when it comes to any of our classes. So we want them to be engaged. We want them to be excited. We want them when they get off to sit there and tell you and you sitting there like, I don't know what they're talking about, but they sound like they know what they're talking about, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. And so that's our goal with it. And you will see firsthand what they're learning and that they're getting it and, and they, they won't be bored at all. All right. Um, anybody else want to kind of throw in some things as far as tutors, teachers, about some of the work and courses and ideas they can expect for the we academy. Have, we have a couple of questions. So okay. I want to make sure everybody's seeing these responses. Um, so one of the questions was, do you have to pick, I mean, can you pick and choose or is it all or none? You can pick and choose. You can choose one course. You can choose all the courses. It's up to you. Um, do you assist students who are in the public schools or do they have to be a part of the homeschool academy? Um, so we can, we will be assisting students who are in the public school. So if you want someone to kind of help oversee what they're doing for this year, if they're going to be doing the virtual learning at home, then we, we will um, have the ability to do that. Um, Gabe asked, what are the costs? Um, Gabe, she's going to go over that in just one moment. Okay. Um, and then let me see, will you all speak and provide more information on that option? Yes. On the oversight option, yes, April, we'll go over that in just a moment. Okay. How do you teach to the child? Okay, so being that elementary students range from ages six to 10, how do you teach to the child's understanding? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna say this. Um, what we do, first of all, is all of our students are required to take our assessment test. It's mm -hmm. not testing 
to put them under the stressors that they normally have with state testing is really for us to see where their learning gaps are. And then we teach to those learning gaps. Yes. So we do, we, we teach to those learning gaps and we also make sure one of our major things uh, with Achieve Success Tutoring period is focusing on the student's learning style. So we wanna make sure whether they are kinesthetic, whether they are visual, whether they are auditory, and we make sure that we cater our lessons towards those particular learning styles. As far as their understanding, uh, we, we have them grouped. Um, so the way that we have them grouped for the academy, kindergarten will be by itself. And so we're gonna be looking at their grade level in addition to where they test um, as far as the diagnostics. And I'll give you an example of why we do that. Um, and I think we have one of our parents on from our Overachiever Academy from the summer. One of our students was, um, I believe he was second grade, but he tested like on a third or fourth grade level in one of the subjects. So um, the first and second grade class that he was in was not advanced enough for him. So we moved him up to the third and fourth grade students because that's where he was. Um, and so that worked out a lot better for him because we don't want students sitting in class board because they know the information. So we want to put them at a level that's going to be challenging for them, not too hard to where they get discouraged, but not too easy to where they don't want to learn or don't want to do this either and that's the beauty of homeschooling um you can be at any level with any subject matter um so you could have a student who's on a who's sixth grade on a ninth grade reading and or math level and that's perfectly okay we're not just going to sit there and teach them sixth grade work because they're in the sixth grade so we have that flexibility um in homeschool to be able to place them based on their actual abilities um, and then the next question, how do you ensure the student is reaching required educational standards? So our test, um, the assessment test that we require all of our students to take, the diagnostic test, um, is based upon common core standards. So we still make sure that we're covering the required standards because, you know, right now we have a lot of parents who are, of course, in the mode of, I'm going to pull my kids out for now, but I want them to eventually go back to school. We want to make sure that when they go back to school, they're at or above grade level. Our preference is above. But um, so we're not going to not cover the standards that they need. And then the last question, is this one on one or group learning? It is group learning, but it's very small group. Um, we went through with our tutors last night and just made sure that we had um, the numbers. We wanted to make sure that we we knew what they felt would work. Um, in our environment, and since we ran this program over the summer, they were all, uh, e it, was, it was easy for them to tell us, yes, it is online. Um, so most of our, our classes will know, I think the, the elementary classes are five students, and then middle and high are up to eight students, but it won't be any more than that. Um, it is completely virtual. Classes are 50 minutes, 50 minutes. Okay, so we have a question, will students get credit if they go back to public school? So what we will do is you will have progress reports and you will have report cards and of course you will have their diagnostics and their testing and all of that to be able to share. Um, every state is different in terms of what they require for homeschooling so you want to make sure that that's what we want to know where you all are from because we're familiar with some of the states and what their requirements are georgia does not require that um there is any type of record that you need to take back to the school system um, when you bring your children back in. So um, for Georgia, you just simply fill out, go to the, Depart the Georgia Department of Education website for Georgia, and you fill out the Declaration of Intent. And there is a deadline to fill that out. I believe it's September 1st or 15th, or somewhere along there. Um, and so as long as you fill that out, you keep your records, which we will have for you. And if you're ever audited, then you just have those records. Um, but you're not, you don't have to send anything in to the state. But in order to officially homeschool your children for Georgia, you do need to fill out the declaration of intent. And I see someone ask the question, can we legally hire people to homeschool our kids? So 
as far as the legally hiring someone to homeschool your children, um, that's why we call the program a homeschool oversight. For homeschooling, you as a parent, when you sign that declaration of intent, you are saying, I am responsible for my child's education. Um, now, how you get that done is your business. Um, mm -hmm. But so you can hire out people to teach your children, to tutor your children, and that's what you will be doing um, through our program. So we're an oversight. So you'll still be responsible for making sure that they have everything that they need academically. Does that make sense? And, and I can speak to that because she's okay. from my area. Um, okay. So um, Lakeisha, technically under the state of Tennessee, you cannot hire someone to homeschool your kids but you can hire someone to teach your kids. That is what the, the law says, literally. You cannot hire someone to homeschool your kids. You are responsible for homeschooling your kids, but you can hire someone to teach your kids. It makes no sense in the world, <laughs> but that is what the law states. So um, you would sign the letter of intent with the state, just like you would with Georgia, and you would then you are then responsible for whatever happens at that point. That's it. That's all it's saying. Um, you're welcome. The next question, do you have college prep classes? We do not offer college prep classes at this time. Okay. And I think that was the last one. Have we, okay. Yes. If there are any others, there. then just uh, ask and we're gonna keep moving along and we'll make sure we have some pauses to um, answer all of your questions as we go along. So great questions so far. Um, just type in the chat area, you know, what are your thoughts so far? What are you thinking? Um, are you looking more for a, um, a coach, someone that will be there with your kids or just kind of have oversight over your children as they are in virtual school with the public school? Or are you looking for, you're like, I'm pulling them out all together for right now. And um, we're looking for someone to teach our children um, for those states that need that particular lingo. <laughs> so just type in the chat area what you're, what you're thinking. So let's kind of go over our costs for right now because I know that is one of the ultimate decisions that's going to help you to determine whether or not this is something that you want to do through our Overachiever um, STEAM Academy. So we do have an enrollment fee. It's annual and it's $50 per family. The academic student success class that we talked about that every student in the academy is required to take is $35 and that, that includes their materials. Um, so for us to get their um, materials out to them. Book fees, um, we will, once you are enrolled, we will make sure that you have that information for everything that you're gonna need for all of the classes that you sign up for. And again, um, the classes are a la carte. So that's the way that we wanted to set it up. There is a semester model and a, an annual model, depending on how you would like to pay as well. Um, and of course, when you get the application, if you're interested, all of that will be in the enrollment application as well. So um, for one course, it's $130 a month. And keep in mind, uh, the classes are meeting twice a week, okay? So each class is going to be meeting twice a week. Um, and so we have that schedule. We're still making sure that we're knocking and ironing everything out for those schedules. But like uh, Letitia said, um, those classes are gonna kind of start midday and evening because we understand that when we tried it for the academy earlier in the day um, for the summer, a lot of parents weren't able to assist their children. So we wanna make sure that we are offering and being very flexible with that. Um, two courses, 265, three courses, 395, four courses, five. And um, if you want all six courses and keep in mind the courses are your math, your reading and ELA, your writing, your science, your entrepreneurship, and your computer science. Um, the computer science is gonna be the coding, it's gonna be the, uh, what else did we say for computer science? Animation, typing, and all those types of things is what they would get from that um, as well. Each session is 50 minutes, if that was um, stated before, and again, they will meet twice a week. On the days that they are not meeting, they will have assignments and work, 
um, the way that our schedule is set up. Classes will be Monday through Thursday. Friday will be the days where they would do their um, student success course, their um, entrepreneurship, and what else was on Fridays, Letitia? Um, the student success entrepreneurship and the computer science. Yes, computer science. So those are the courses that will be on Fridays. The core courses will be alternating based on the schedule um, Monday through Thursday. Okay, we have some more questions. Okay. Um, Lakeisha said this is permanent for them. Um, Dee Dee asked, in Tennessee, if you homeschool, where does that leave within, with school-related extracurricular activities? I'm wanting to homeschool for now and possibly send back in January. Um, so for extracurricular activities, it would, it would have to be, you wouldn't be able to do, well, let me say this. I don't think you would be able to participate in school-related extra, extracurricular activities. I don't know, based upon what's going on in Tennessee right now, if they're going to be able to have any extracurricular activities. I don't even think that, right now they're only going virtually for one month. I don't think that they're even going to be able to go back after that because the Tennesseans are wilding out. So I don't think that, um, that that they'll even be able to have any extracurricular activities. Um, and I don't even know that it's safe, even if they decide to. But as far as wanting to send back in January, you may want to look more so at oversight versus the academy. Because um, oversight will allow him, well, I guess I would have to ask you, what is your, because you're in Paris, what are they doing there? Can you unmute yourself? Are you at work? I am at work. Hey guys. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Right now they are doing absolutely nothing. They have just set a date of August the 3rd and said that the kids are going back. They have not offered us a virtual um, school. They have not offered anything online. They've done nothing. Um, so it's, it's a big concern for me, especially, you know, seeing the, the, the aspects of it from both sides. So it's, it's really been weighing on me, the decisions that I need to make, um, pertaining to him. And then it's his freshman year as well. So there we go. Okay. I got you. So, um, and Didi is a nurse, which is why she says she's on both sides. She sees both sides. So I would say um, for him, you would probably want to, if they're not doing anything, you're going to have to do an intent to, to homeschool and have him come out for, you can come out for a semester. If you want to send him back in January, you can send him back. I don't think that Tennessee requires you to be out the whole year, um, but if it's going to make you feel more comfortable as far as his safety is concerned. And that's how I would look at it as a parent, just the safety and well-being of my child. Um, and they're not doing anything, then yeah. And I don't know if y'all's numbers are as high as they are here in Nashville, but in Nashville, it's ridiculous. So if, if it's going to make you feel more comfortable, I would say commit to homeschooling. Um, and then, um, maybe send them back in January. But as far as the extracurricular, he won't be able to participate in school-related activities. Um, so then we already homeschool, but we're seeking other types of classes to supplement and add more fun into our school. Um, and that's something that, that you could do with like our entrepreneurship, um, our technology piece, our ac ac academic success course. Um, we actually have students taking that over the summer and they really enjoyed it. Um, so you can use those types of classes for that. Um, Tanisha Utley says, I'm looking to fill learning gaps. Our diagnostic test will, will point us in the right direction in order to help assist you with that. Um, I get amazed every time I have a child take a diagnostic test because um, they could be making straight A's in school and still have several learning gaps that, that you would never know about because all parents see is, well, they're passing their classes, they're making A's. Right. Um, do I have to commit to a year or semester? You can commit to a semester on the application. We have it to where you can say, okay, I just want one semester or I want 
um, both semesters, the entire year. But we do need, so this is not going to be a month to month commitment just because of how we're building everything out, how everything is built out. So we are not completely finalized with the, with the entire school schedule, but they will be six weeks on, um, one week off. So with that, it would be impossible for you to go month to month with this. Um, but yes, you need to, you would need to make a decision on whether or not you want to commit for one semester or both semesters. Okay, I'm an educator myself, 17 years. I work for Atlanta Public Schools. We will be 100% virtual for the entire year or first semester? Just for the semester right now or until further notice. Okay, okay, cool. Um, I'm looking to have additional support for my biological children due to the difficulty of teaching my students and assisting my own. So you're looking more for oversight, which is fine. Um, Again, we'll be able to provide that service to you. Are those mm -hmm. prices for both the academy and oversight? Um, um, I answered that. Those prices are just for the academy. Um, oh, we're I working on the oversight. If you guys could kind of, uh, as far as the oversight goes, um, talk to us about what, what you're looking for and what you need. And you well, can for me personally, um, like I said, I have a um, third grader. My daughter, my youngest is going to third grade. My oldest is going to the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And um, just knowing, you know, we were basically virtual from March until May. Mm -hmm. And it was just keeping that, well, I know everything was new. So it was new for me. It was new for them. But just keeping them engaged and not being lost academically with their curriculum like it, it just took a lot and i couldn't do it because i had to worry about my students it was just a lot going on in the house and i feel like they just need the, the extra support to make sure they're understanding what's going on in their class making sure they're on you know just making sure they're on the right path with what's going on in their classroom um, like I said, it just became difficult for me. Um, I'm a special ed teacher, so I was in the general ed class teaching, and then I had to do separate special ed small groups. So I was doing like basically two jobs at one, plus trying to help my third grader, plus trying to help my eighth grader. So it was just overwhelming for the whole household, really. So okay. really just them needing the structure and all that to make sure they're on track with these two these coming up school years. Before okay. you mute yourself, let me ask you this. What have they said like what it's gonna look like as far as time is concerned? What do you mean for about like time? will they be will they be Their doing classes. a whole school day online or how is that gonna look for them? Um my principal at my school, they have, that has not been shared, like how we're going to break down. Like we don't report back until the 3rd, August 3rd. So I guess that's when we'll find out the breakdown of how long English, like you know, whatever um, is going to be. Um, as of right now, I have no idea. And okay. I don't even know if they do right now, honestly. Okay. I know here they offered... Um a six hour six hours but the six hours is not straight six hours so it could be two hours in the morning two hours in the afternoon two but yeah but they haven't that, shared anything yeah. with us yet as it relates to how everything is going to be we have no idea okay okay so that's going to be the other thing how long they have to be on there okay gabe um gabe i'll send you a message um yeah, I'll send you a message. She says she has to go. I'll send you a message, Gabe. Don't worry about it. I'll get back with you. Um, you're welcome. Um, and then the next person said, I would like to get, I would also like to get science help because my daughter loves science, but that is not my specialty and I want to help her flourish where she desires. Do you also work with pre-K children? Aquarius does. She does science with my daughter. Oh. I, I don't like science. Oh. Um, but my daughter is no science, <laughs> and so yeah, Aquarius allows my child to do um, camps that are not set up for her. So yeah, we can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> we can handle that. Um, okay. How old is your yes. child, Tanisha? Pre-K. What what age is are they? Okay, sorry about that. I do have a. Uh, 
four year old right now. Um, but the other one that I'm talking about for science is the one that is seven. She is oh, the one, she's older, but she loves science. But I also just have a, a four year old too that also needs help. So I was trying to see if your program also helps them as well. But I know I would definitely try to get some help for science for my seven year old. Okay. So, so yes, for the science, if that's all you're uh, looking for, then you want to just do the one course. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You would just do the one course. Um, that's your monthly rate, and the application will have, you know, how, what it looks like if you want to pay for the semester, if you want to pay annually. Um, okay. As far as the pre k -er is concerned, um, what is it that you're looking for for the pre k -er? Now, for the pre-K, um, just the basics. Uh, I know how to work with him, but he does not work with me. So that's a big struggle. So I think the, the frustration for me is knowing how to work with them or what they need, but not being able to get across to my own children. And instead of fighting that battle, I think that I just have to allow someone to help me. Um, because, like I said, the, the older one, she needs to, to fill the gaps for her learning gaps definitely in reading um okay. so if i could get help for that and then also look into doing the science course i'll look at what both of those fees are and see what okay. you know works best for our budget okay so probably so, yeah. probably the diagnostic would work for both of them because our program mm -hmm. actually does cover younger areas like my daughter mm -hmm. uses our program um and it's right. really so it okay. does cover those younger ones but i would say the diagnostic is where we need to start that way you can have a full picture of what's going on with both of your children and then make a more um, educated decision on where to go at that point. Because I don't want you to just say, okay, let's do science and reading and then maybe she's- Yeah, other gaps. Yeah, or maybe mm -hmm. she's not struggling as much as we think in reading. She could just be being lazy. So we've got to kind of mm -hmm. figure all of that out. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, let's let me make sure see. answer all questions. I'm just going back through. Uh, okay, some homeschool networks collaborate for sports and extracurricular activities. Yes, I don't know what that's going to look like this year simply because of what we're going through. Um, but you could I always tell parents AAU, um, or any of the like we have community leagues, um, that a lot of our homeschoolers participate in, so they still get that sport. Yeah, um. Okay. Yeah. yeah. One of the misconceptions about homeschooling that as a homeschooler, we literally roll our eyes um, is that whole um, concept of socialization. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It is absolutely completely false. Yeah. Um, that they, I think they are the most socialized because they're able to interact with children of all different ages and adults as well. Because mm -hmm. um, before COVID 19, um, you know, my son would tell his neighbor, um, the neighbor's kids, the friends in the neighborhood, he's, he's like, I go on more field trips in a week than you do in a year. Um, you know, so they're able to get that real world experience by going out and by exploring um, because, again, nothing is traditional. And just to give you an idea, um, you can make going to the grocery store a homeschool session and a homeschool lesson. You can, you can make going to the park your PE. Um, so everything does not have to be had within the four walls of your home. There's so many things we would explore the neighborhood. We did a lesson on um, plants. And so, okay, well, let's get out and let's just go and find some stuff. We got bags, we got this, and you're, we're pulling plants and we came back and we dissected them, you know, from what we found in nature. Um, and you and I both know that that won't happen in regular public school you know they may get to see the plants on the powerpoint or on you know on the whiteboard um but so there's so many things um think outside the box be very creative and this is the opportunity to tap into what they love i love how tanisha says she knows what her daughter she's really interested in science so this is the opportunity for you to find what they love and i know for my science classes and a lot of our classes we're going to be looking at what are they interested in and that's going to help guide what we teach and that's the beauty of homeschooling so we can take their interest, pull it in, and make it a lesson. So I did a whole lesson on um, slime 
um, six weeks lesson on slime because one of my students liked slime. So now they're learning about polymers. They're learning about chemistry. It turned into cooking, you know, and, and all of that. So we're able to take their interest and we're able to cap captivate them basically um, by reeling them in. Um, and so they're not even realizing that they're learning because they're having so much fun as they do it. Okay, and then I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. And if I'm not, please forgive me. Mashonda says math and ELA. Um, I guess this is what she's looking for. Math and ELA helping to close in the gaps and some advancements for both of her children. Okay. Um, and then April asked a question, would taking the time management, the academic success courses on Friday be available for oversight students? Yeah, we can make that available. Yeah, we can make, sure. we can make, make a note that. of that. Yeah not a problem at all i think all kids need those classes and it's unfortunate they don't they don't see yeah they don't okay let me um i'm going to let me see because i need to find the link or do you have the link for the app um the homeschool interest form <laughs> It will come out at some point. I'm like, what are you trying to say? I can grab it. Give me just a second. I'll grab okay. Um, I was going to say I would need to stop sharing so I can find the link. Um, so for those of you who are interested. Now, keep in mind, these rates are going to be our, our, our early bird special rates. Um, and so we will, these rates will go up. This is the low end, the lowest end. Um, so if it's something that you're considering, um, then you may want to go ahead and lock in by sending in your application, your enrollment fee, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff as soon as you can um, before we take the rates up. Any questions about the pricing? Oh, there it is. Ha! <laughs> huh. I thought I had put it on there, but I wasn't sure. I'll stick it in the chat too. That way they can okay. just click on it. What are the prices for the oversight students? That's the next question. Okay. So we don't have the pricing for the oversight. We're going to be working on that. That's why we wanted to get your feedback. Um, let me ask this. Um, for the oversight, are you looking for daily? Are you looking for kind of overall weekly they they sign in for a couple of hours or are you looking for us to be with them kind of like for the whole time that's what we need to kind of get an understanding of so to help us to see how much time we would be um devoting to the kids i wasn't thinking daily i know that's a lot um i would say maybe like twice two to three times a week kind of like uh just to kind of check in make sure you're on, you know, that you're not getting behind in, your, in whatever it is the kids are doing. That's really okay. more so my thinking. Okay. But I really wasn't thinking an everyday thing. That would be a lot for both the teacher and my, my girls too. That would be a okay. lot. And I agree. I'm looking somewhat for um, the oversight where it's maybe two or three days out of the week to help maybe um, 30 minutes on some of the science or something of that sort in the hour on filling the gap just whatever works best or what whatever type of schedule you have um, but okay. something to kind of work on those two things once we find out what she needs and also work on some of those things she likes so she'll enjoy everything okay all right and so that helps us so a lot of times you know we don't want to kind of build something out um that you don't need right um, so that's why this is important for us. And that's why we don't have the price. And the academy is different. But this, you know, the oversight, um, because we're all waiting to see what's happening. Um, and you guys don't know. So we, and so therefore we don't know. So that's why it's important. So once we are able to kind of get this feedback, which is very good, then it helps us. And we'll be able to get that information to you all. Um, and Didi, Didi said weekly as well. Okay. Okay, um, so. And then there was another question. The pricing is per child for each course. Is the pricing per child for each course? Yes, the pricing is per child for each course, but we do have a sibling discount. Mm -hmm. 
And also Aquarius, um, mm -hmm. I, like I told you, we go back on the third, but I can just let you know what's being said regardless. Okay, what, yes. Just so you will know, you know, what's what within the school system. Yes. Like um, said, we just got a new superintendent, so. You're APS. Yeah. Okay, and gotcha. Our, our start date was supposed to be August 10th, and they're pushing that back to the 24th just to give teachers time to plan. So, okay. I mean, we really have no idea right now what's what. So, okay. basically, we'll find out on the third when we have to report back. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And and that's what we're doing. Um, it's just kind of hearing the chatter, like, what y'all mm -hmm. supposed to do? What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? And so, it gives us an idea. It's not consistent across Georgia. It's like every district is doing their own thing, which is crazy. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's. Right. It's the same here too, though, um, because some schools are like one school district. They're going back, no mask. Everybody's That's just going back, like, and that is ridiculous to me. That's crazy. And then um, the law, Nashville, the Metropolitan School District, there, they've decided that first they were going to do the option of virtual or in or on site. Then they decided everyone's going virtual at least through the first month, um, and then they want to try and look at the numbers in September. I don't think they're going to make it past the semester. I think they're going to have to stay out for the whole semester. All it's going to take is one person getting sick. It's going to shut everything down anyway. Right. Right. So, right. It's and so um, it's just all over the place. I, I, I just, you know, and then, you know, I think Jessica's, uh, she's in Mississippi and she said the other day, her superintendent said, teachers teach, computers don't teach. So they're going back <laughs> no matter what. Okay. So it's just it's all over the place. Um, yeah. the, for the academy, what time in the evenings will the classes be held? Oh, okay, you said between three to seven. Um, and that's I believe in the, I got that right. Yeah, the, I think the latest one ends at 6.30, but that's only for class. We do have some classes that are during the day. Um, but, um, you know, when we want to make sure that the parent is there, we try and do it early afternoon or in the evening. Mm -hmm. um Didi said that's her school district no mass no temps no required testing jesus um shameful and that was that, that is, that's just you crazy. know how they don't value your life and they don't value you it's yeah. all about money at the end of the day that's yeah right. that's what it is mm -hmm. and it's sad um so i think that's it for the questions i don't we don't have any more questions um if you fill out the interest form then we'll have your information We'll be able to um, send over some additional information to you. If you have any questions, um, anybody that's on Facebook, you can always go to our, uh, our page. We do pretty well with just responding to messages there. Um, and I think somewhere in the chat, Aquarius, you put the email address. You can also email us. Um, she did put that in the chat, but I'll stick it in there again. Oh, you be yeah i was gonna say i'll put everything in there you can go ahead and keep talking okay um so you can also email us um or you can call us um we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have we're not trying to push our academy on anybody but we do want to make the best decisions for these children um you know as i stated my child is not in school but even if she was, my niece is, my sister is, and my sister is uh, administration. She knows she'll have to be at work. She is not sending my niece to school, no matter what they say. Um, it's just not gonna, this is just not gonna work for her. She has a, a older son that's asthmatic. We cannot bring this, this illness into the home. So, um, you know, we wanna make sure that you're able to give your children whatever you need to give them um, in whatever mm -hmm. manner, whether it's the academy, whether it's oversight, it may, it may just be tutoring. We don't know, but whatever we're able to help you with, we want to make sure that, that we get that done for you this academic school year. Okay, oversight in one class for a high achieving sixth grader. Okay. That's for a high achieving. Okay. And the okay. other thing that we do have to our advantage is we do work with other homeschool academies mm -hmm. so I know Aquarius and I were talking last night and she was like I don't want to do history this year <laughs> with Jakari so I'm gonna just get and we have another friend who does history she says I'm just gonna get Shiva to do it and I'll take her kids on for science or math and so we do have partnerships where we're able to get the kids with 
other people if it's something that we're not offering. Just know that this is not the end all. We will do our best to just make sure that your children are set up for success. Okay. Absolutely. So any other questions? What are your thoughts? Um, did, does this help you to kind of make a decision about what it is that you want to do? Um, so if the schools never answer your questions and your needs, what are you going to do? I think really that's what's going to happen at the end of the day. Um, that's the decision that you all will, that every single person is going to have to make. If they are not having guidelines that are going to be satisfactory to okay. you, what are you going to do? Um, and, you know, whether they force you to pick a side or, you know, make a choice, you have to make a choice and you're going to have to make a choice sooner than later. Um, so I'd say most of you got about another week or so to make a choice. Yeah. Um, so what are you all leaning towards or what do you need help with in terms of making a decision? Well, I've, I've already decided that my child will be going back virtual. Um, and with our county, you do half, half virtual and the other half face-to-face. -face. Um, but I also found out during the, uh, this pandemic that my child exceeds better virtual doing face-to-face, -face, there's so many other issues that get in her way of learning. Disruptive students in the class, um, just all other kind of issues that they have in the middle school. Okay. And, and we experienced that this summer uh, with one of our clients. It's actually my cousin. Um, I've been working with him, just tutoring him for a, a while now. And he did our uh, Overachievers STEAM Academy for the summer. And here in, in Nashville, middle school starts at fifth grade. So he was fifth grader. And in, in Atlanta or Georgia, it's, I think it's sixth grade. So when we placed him, I just told Aquarius middle school and she was like, okay. So she put him in there. And then after a couple of days, I said, oh my goodness, he's in there with, it was only six, I think it was seventh and eighth graders. I don't think we had any sixth graders. And mm -hmm. I was like, he's in there with seventh and eighth graders. And Aquarius said, well, what grade is he in? And I was like, fifth. She said, oh, I thought when you said middle school, it was sixth grade. And I said, no. And so what we found out from him was one, he, and I asked him, I said, why is it that you're doing so well in this academy versus when you go to school? And he said, one, my teachers look like me. Two, they don't make me feel dumb when I ask a question, which I had to take back to his parents, which led to a whole nother episode with the school, school system. But it, he said, they don't make me feel dumb when I ask a question. And then when I talked to Josie, because Josie, and Naomi both taught him. When I talked to Josie about it, I said, Josie, just, I just want to let you know, he's in the fifth grade. She was like, whoa. She said, I wouldn't have even thought he was in the fifth grade because he was excelling so much with her. And, you know, he, he loved Josie and Naomi to the point where he, before COVID, he had asked his parents, what if I could homeschool just for a year to see what it's like? Because I like my teachers. So I do agree they get a whole bunch of other things with a lot of people at school, students, teachers, whomever, that causes the conflict. And he was just really able to do so much better over the summer than he had done, I would say, for the last three years. Like, it was just, he just picked up stuff so much easier. Um, and he always does well with me, so I could never understand why it was so hard for him while he was in school. Um, but the only class that he did well in, he had an African-American male teacher. Everything else, he, he's just like, they don't, they don't, they make me feel dumb. So I don't ask questions. I'm not going to ask questions. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, um, we're here, everyone, whatever it is that you need, we will do our best to provide it. Even if you decide, um, oversight is not 
what you need, even if you decide the STEAM Academy is not what you need, if you're going to go completely virtual with the school system, we still offer traditional virtual tutoring. Okay, so we're still here if you just say, hey, they're, um, they're taking, um, I don't know, whatever class and they just need help with that one class. We still offer traditional tutoring and so we can still assist you in that way as well. But if you just want to say, hey, but we want to do entre entrepreneurship because you want to have some extracurricular type things um, for them, then you just come into the academy and take the student success, take the, um, the computer science, take the entrepreneurship. Um, so um, you have a lot of flexibility. I do want you to understand that. You've got a lot of flexibility to have fun with your children in experimenting this year. And homeschooling is a big old experiment. Okay, <laughs> so just know and understand that and every homeschool mom and or family will let you know that we just we just experiment. The, the, the good thing is, it's your child. So, you know, if you mess up, I always look at my son. I just be like, how do I do? He be like, you did okay. Okay, all right. That's all I need to know. <laughs> you know, are you learning? And there are going to be times where you feel like they aren't learning. Because even as a teacher, as a tutor, as an educator, I felt like, I don't know if I'm doing this right, even with my own child. And then I would hear him talk to other people. And I'm just like, oh, okay, well, I did do that. Because that's, they're regurgitating that. So sometimes in your face, they're going to make you feel dumb. Like you ain't... <laughs> You ain't did squat with teaching, um, but when they go out or when they speak into other people, that's when you're going to see it. So um, it's easy to feel like a failure when you're teaching your own child, like you can't do it. But I promise you, you can. I promise you that you are going to be great at it. Um, and then the parts that you feel like you can't do the best at, then that's when you have someone else. Again, history is not my thing. So I'm just like, who's going to teach it? That's why it's not on our list not my forte um so we contract out the history part for someone else to do but there's so many other ways and areas that you can find exactly what you need that fits your particular needs so i just wanted to point that out all righty so this was good um anything else um that you all would like uh to talk about or you have any questions or concerns or anything like that Nope. Okay. Um, so we're going to be working Hi. on. Go ahead. Hi, this is me and I do have a question. Will this video be available for replay? I know I missed a lot of information. Yes. From the part that I realized I was not recording. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the good stuff is in there. Okay. You just missed the introduction. That's all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the meat of it is there. So yes, we will have that. Um, everybody had to register, um, so we have your email information, and so we'll make sure that we send that out to everyone. Um, also, um, if you look in the chat, we'll know it wouldn't be there because you're just getting in here. So we'll repost all the links, the homeschool interest form as well, um, and um, we'll just send the presentation, um, or we'll just kind of summarize everything for you guys in an email as well. So we should have everyone's information. But... Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. We are available um, for the most part. We do have um, camp that we're rounding out. We still have, um, what's the next week? If you guys are still looking for something fun for the kids for the remainder next of the summer. Next week is uh, slime, steam, and math magic. Okay. And then the last week is slime and steam. Yeah. Steam. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all super uh, yeah. fun, all learning. That's the one where I'll be having her baby because um, she, but. I don't like slime. It, it wasn't Mom, her I age group, but we made it her <laughs> age group. Is that for all, stu all ages or what particular group? What particular age group? I'm sorry. The last week is for all ages because we've been doing it throughout the summer. So we just like, we just said, okay, the, the final week, whoever was not able to get in or for whatever reason, it'll be for all ages. Just know that, especially for slime and steam, um, for the younger kids who are not at a certain reading level, at least at a third grade reading level, you will need to assist them. Um, 
you know, with the cutting, with the measuring, um, all of those things, um, they will need assistance. But they can do it. It's completely doable. You're just going to have to be hands-on with them. Um, for the older kids, they can pretty much do it themselves, and you'll get all your materials list um, and uh, the recipes and um, instructions and all of that ahead of time to print out as well. And for the Math Magic, the workbook, you will need to purchase, but that link will be available for you to get their workbook as well. And that's just for, that's running for elementary next week. Okay. Yeah, that's at elementary next week, so. But I would say, even if based on what I'm looking at, even if they're not elementary, even if they're middle, Letitia, I think they could get a nice little refresher from what you're teaching. Oh, what absolutely, I was they at, can. Yeah, yeah, they can. It was, just, it was just geared towards elementary for next week. But if, they, yeah. if it's a middle schooler and you want them to take it, that's fine. Um, what I'll probably do when it comes to competitions is do, just do breakout rooms so the elementary are not freaking out. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is true. They know okay. everything. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I'll just do a breakout room then. But yeah, if you have a middle school that's interested, that that would be great. Um, and we we also, um, if you go to our Facebook page, um, we also have, we're giving away three free sessions, three free yes. camp sessions um, the last week. That does not include the materials, but the actual camp fee will be waived for three people for the last week and we have some instructions on the giveaway there so if anybody's interested in that please do um go to our facebook page and uh, fill that out for it oh and last but not least um academic success lounge i'm so, sorry i just had um, I'm, I'm sorry before you go for it i just want um my question was what time for next week's or the following week's camp what time would that be uh, let me pull it up. We have time zone issues. What time zone are you in before we speak? I'm in uh, Central San Texas, so uh, okay, Central me time. Me too, because Aquarius okay. confuses me every single day. <laughs> I'm in the That's wrong the one place thing. at the wrong time. That's the one thing we cannot get together, <laughs> because we're in two separate time zones. Uh, next week is, so in your time zone, it will be 10 to 1130 okay. for slime. Uh, steam is 1 to 2.30. And let me pull this up because I want to make sure I'm telling you the camps in the right order. Okay, I'm pulling it up as well. Let me get the link for everything while you pull everything up. Okay, give me just one second. I know I have it somewhere. Okay, so... This week is the 20th. So slime is from 10 to 11.30. Steam is from 1 to 2.30. And the math camp is from 4 to 5.30. That's Central Standard Time. So Eastern okay. Time, slime would be 11 to 12.30. Steam, 2 to 3.30. And math, 5 to 6.30. Then the last week, we're running slime and steam only. So slime is from 1 to 2.30 Central Time. And steam is from 4 to 5.30. Central time. Okay, I'll put the link in here for you all. Um, so you, you can go directly there. Okay, and um, I'll put in there. So we do have a Facebook group called the Academic Success Lounge for Parents. Um, so this is where you can get everything off your chest if you just want to vent or you're frustrated or if you just need help. And it's kind of like a parenting and academic because they go hand in hand um so you know you got your kids that don't want to do right with their homework or you know you need they don't want to read don't like to read you know those types of things i'm seeing a lot of posts about that this summer um and so we are able to share those tips and help and coach you um as well so i'll grab that link um and put it in there so please join if um you feel inclined and that's all i have for the evening me too all righty well we appreciate every last single one of you um for joining us this evening um we hope that you got a lot out of it we hope that um you are just as excited as we are about the upcoming school year and we do most certainly hope that we were able to kind of lower that stress level 
just a little bit in terms of being able to make a decision. All right, so you all have a good evening and uh, we will see you somewhere on social media. I'm pretty sure of it. Thank you. <laughs> all right, bye. Good night, Thank everyone. You all. Thank good you. night.